Jared, sometimes in life things go full circle and you're back here in West Belfast. Do you want to tell us, as we sit here in Corrigan Park all these years later, where it all started for you? You're from this part of the world, from the West? Up from the Springfield, born in the Springfield Road, up in uh, Collinview Street. Lived there for about 16 years, went to St John's School in Colin Ward Street and then not far from here went to St Thomas's Secondary Intermediate. And then uh, five years later, six years later, took off to Australia. Been there 50 years now in November. So was that one of those £10 tickets or something? £10 it was and I couldn't believe it the day I set foot on the plane. It was a jumbo jet and you just looked down, there's three seats on one side, four in the middle, three in the other. And I'd only been on propeller planes mostly before that. Yeah. And then I uh, got involved way back in 74 with the GAA in South Australia and Adelaide. Um, been with them ever since. Became secretary of the Australasian board, heading in towards the 38th year. Do you remember going to it with um, a sort of a vision? Did you have those things in those days? <laughs> Everything was positive in those days. You know, Gaelic games only really at the Australasian level only really started in 1974. Actually, uh, 2024 is the 50th anniversary of it coming up. So everything was positive then and uh, states were growing. When I say states, that, that meant, you know, the, the West Australia, South Australia, Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. I think we got up to about three and a half thousand members. Now at the present time, we're probably running around about two and a half thousand players. So after 38 years, how do you look back on your involvement in all of that time? Is there any way you can sum it up? Give me lots, lots and lots of enjoyment, and also give me some heartache at time. What a vision that I had, and I also got it from Jim Farn and Shima Sullivan as well, where we want to involve more of the local people. We know that in Sydney, you you can't do much more than what Sydney's got, and, and to a lesser extent Melbourne. But I see now what's going on. We're, we're next year for the first time we're going to have a failed tournament in this Australasia, which is going to be held in Adelaide. So that's the thing that really impresses me when I look at what's called the, the Gaelic Games Junior Academy over in Perth, and I see the, the Nippers, uh, etc., and Geelong, etc., and Young Melbourne now. And that's the way some clubs have to go. So between that and getting more Australians and Kiwis involved, that, that's where, when I walk away, I'm, I'm glad to see there's a lot more of it happening now than what there was way back in 1974. And what about the state games coming back? I'm sure you're delighted to see it finally come back and it's important for the whole development and just giving games and raising the profile. It is indeed, De definitely. Uh, every year you go to the state games, you just, you just see the, the, the joy that players have going there and playing against you know, good players for, from another unit. And what we've done now is recognise that uh, you can't have uh, the like of the South Australian men and women playing against the New South Wales men and women. They can play against them and have done for years, but if you want a better competition, you had to go to what we call an intermediate grade. And so you're going to have intermediate grade in the men and the women. Uh, so really good to see it. First time ever that we're going to have nine aside. The selling point for that as well is that uh, it's a good bridge, the first part of the bridge where you're building for the World Games next year in Derry. And that's a nine-a-side competition too. And we pick the all-stars from, uh, from each particular code. They in turn then get first option or first invite for to go and play in Ireland at the, at the World Games. We took six teams home the last time. Absolutely loved every minute of what happened in Waterford. Five of them played off on the, on the grand final day in Croke Park and won two titles. Look, every year when we look around, people say, who are the favourites? You, you, you can easily say Sydney, OK? But it doesn't always work out that way. Or you can say Melbourne, OK? And I think just going on uh, my contacts that I've had with the lad called Rob O'Callaghan over in Perth, who's as keen as mustard, they're bringing really strong men's and women's teams across. In 2019, the last uh, time the championship were held, which were in Brisbane, the best uh, competition I've been told because I was actually in bed in a hotel with pneumonia up there at the time but everybody to this day tells me the best match of the finals was the intermediate fin final between regional Victoria and South Australia so uh, if that's the way it's going to be I, I think everybody who's going to be there will have a ball they'll be watching what's this new team that never traveled uh, an intermediate team from Wellington ladies what are they going to be like You've got uh, some 16, 7 year olds who have progressed through the Geelong Gales from the under 10s right up are going to make their debut this year. Sorry, for uh, Vic 
um, regional Victoria. And then you've got Met uh, the Metro Victorian team because they've gone intermediate as well. They're putting uh, a team in, in, in men's and women's football. I think the intermediate thing's going to be a really great competition. And if you were to say to me, look, who's going to win the men and women? I don't know. And that's not the best way to be. You don't know going into the games who is definitely going to be head and shoulders above anybody else.